Lay their feet flat on the mat. Hands down by your sides. Take a few minutes to just breathe deeply. Allow the belly to expand and the rib cage to expand. So just take some nice deep breaths as you kind of settle in onto your mat. And just rock side to side, let the knees sway side to side, and just check in with the low back and pelvis. And then just really get the knees kind of swinging, just let them go. Not necessarily super fast, but without really trying to control the movement too much, just letting it go side to side. We're just going to loosen up the hips. And then bring the knees back to the ceiling. Maybe walk the feet in just a little bit. It slid out. And begin to draw in the belly. So engaging that transversus abdominis. It feels like you're going to be pulling the hip bones, your ASIS apart from one another, the navel in and up to the spine, and then an in and upward energy. As the ribs draw down, they draw together. Take a few breaths here to expand the rib cage, the side body to the back body. Breathing nice and deep. Getting that lateral breath going. And on your next exhale, notch in the chest. Inhale, just releases it. My ponytail's in the wrong spot for that. So just keep going with your breath. A few more rounds, gaining length in your neck. Keep expanding the lungs as the belly draws in and up. And then take your arms up to the ceiling. Palms face one another. And as you inhale, draw the fingertips up just by sliding your shoulder blades up your rib cage. And then allow the shoulders to drop back down to the mat. Feel nice and grounded. And just flow with your breath. A few rounds here of these puppet arms, kind of warming things up. And then take your arms down to your hips as you inhale. As you exhale, take the arms up and overhead without letting the ribs follow. So the ribs are still knitting down, knitting together. Inhaling, hands to hips, exhaling, arms up and overhead. Feel that oppositional energy from shoulder blade to fingertips. A few more rounds here. And as you exhale, arms up, then inhale as you draw the arms out to the sides, take them back up, start these circles or angel arms, flowing with your breath. Get the shoulder blades moving around the rib cage. Keep the ribs drawing down and reverse your circles. Let's go one more. And then take the hands back up to the ceiling, palms facing one another. Engage the core, knit the ribs. We're going to float just the head. So take a deep inhale to prepare. As you exhale, head curls up. Look to your belly, keeping the shoulders down. So just the head lift. Inhale it down. Exhale to curl the head up. And three more times here. And two. And fire that back body. Fire just under the ribs. 
hold the head up. And on your next inhale, lower the head down. Rock it side to side, check in. I'm gonna keep those hands up. Take a deep inhale to knit the ribs, engage the core. Exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders this time. Fingertips come down towards the heels, reaching the arms long. Inhale, lower back down. Arms come overhead. Exhale, curl it back up. Nice, let's do three more or so. Really engage, hold this last one. Look towards your belly. Think of flattening out the belly east to west. Hold for three more breaths. Engage the back body. Really push it down into the mat to help you lift that front body. And then inhale, float it down. Let's take the hands behind the head, fingertips inter or fingers interlaced right at the base of the skull. Give yourself a little massage here and open the elbows really wide, draw them together. Do that two more times. And then take them out halfway to that point where you can really feel your armpit muscles, the back, the shoulder blade muscles all engaging. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, curl up head, neck, and shoulders. Look towards the belly. Inhale it back down. Keep that back body engaged. Exhale, curl it up. This time we're gonna hold the head up if you can. Take a right armpit to left knee. Inhale, just back to center, but not down with the head. Exhale, left armpit, right knee. And let's float back and forth between the two. Keep that chest lift going. Keep the belly going east to west, hollowing it out, drawing the ribs together. Keep pushing the head into the hands. And let's go three more each side. And two more. And one. And lower down, lower the arms down towards the hips, shake the head out. If you've got tension in your neck, you can draw some circles with your nose on the ceiling or those figure eights. And loosen your neck up. And then let's move into a pelvic tilt. So we're gonna rock the pelvis forward and back. Draw the abs in, knit the ribs together. So keep that strong transversus engagement as you go. It's going to limit your movement a little bit. So as you bring the belly button down and the low back flattens out, that's our pelvic tuck. As you create space under your low back, the tailbone drops down. That's your anterior pelvis position. So keep moving between the two. Feel a nice stretch, go really slow for a couple, really flatten the entire lower back out against the mat. Feel like you're peeling it away as you go back towards the tailbone down that arch in the back. And find a little stretch there. And one more time, nice and slow to each side. And then back to the center which hopefully is about neutral pelvis, your ASIS, bony hip bones, and your pubic bone are level with the floor. Knit the ribs together, engage that core again, drop your left hip, and then your right. So just going from side to side, not letting your knees sway. So just moving the pelvic floor, the lower transversus, the fire the movement, a little bit of hip flexors. Keep checking in with those ribs, draw them down. And then meet back up in the center. Take it back to your tuck. The low back is flat against the mat. Think of your pelvis as a bowl. 
And we're going to roll the marble all the way around as you go in a circle in one direction and then reverse it, go in the other direction. So your pelvis is just rolling around. It's like you're going around the clock on a clock hands too. And then come back to neutral. And just check in, sway the knees a little bit if you need to. Reach the fingertips back down. We're gonna take a deep inhale, prepare. Exhale, begin to curl the pelvis up, come into that pelvis tuck. And then we're going to lift up one bone at a time, up into a nice low bridge. Inhale at the top. Stretch your knees out. As you exhale, drop the upper back, mid back. And really work on getting the low back down. Go nice and slow, all the way back to that neutral pelvis. Maybe a little bit of that anterior tilt to create space. And let's do that two more times. Curling up really nice and slow. Try to get as much movement in your spine as you can. So it's not a race to get to the top of your bridge. And when you get to the top, make sure the ribs don't flare. They're still drawing down and together. Rolling back down nice and slow. One more time. Inhale, grow long at the top. Exhale, lower upper back, mid back, low back. And rock the knees side to side, do a little windshield wiper. And the knees are back up towards the ceiling. We're gonna draw the ribs down, engage through the core. Use only the pelvic floor muscles, hip flexors. We're going to raise that right leg up to 90 degrees. And we're going to toe dip it down, not letting your ankle go any closer in towards the bum. And the pelvis stays nice and still. You can put your hands on your ASIS if that kind of helps to gauge. It's like there's a cement block on the pelvis holding it still. And we're gonna try to keep it still as we lower that leg down and switch out legs. Raise that left leg up. Check in, make sure the pelvis is still level with the floor, toe dips here. Drawing the ribs together, engaging the core. And then lift the left leg up to 90, bring the right leg up to meet it. So both legs at tabletop, check in, draw the ribs down, really engage the transversus. We're gonna alternate this time. So right leg first and then left. Yep, don't let those the ankles go any closer. Keep holding that same bend in the knee. And one more each side. Hug the knees in a second, rock side to side. Maybe scribe some circles with your knees. Waking those hips up. All right. Take your arms out to a T, palms down. And then draw in the core, float that right leg up, then float the left leg up. Squeeze the knees together here. We're gonna take the legs up and over to the right. Inhale back to center, exhale up and over to the left. Try not to let those knees separate, keeping them together as you flow with the breath, lowering to one side. Inhaling the center and then lower to the other. Two more each side. So make sure you're able to keep the ribs drawing down. Don't let the ribs flare. That's going to control how far over you go. So it's going to vary person to person, but your hip, one hip does lift off the mat. And then drop the feet down. 
rock side to side, do a little windshield wiper. Maybe take your feet wide this time, as wide as your mat. And then we're gonna move into hundreds. We're gonna go ahead and really begin warming up here. So different options, of course, with your feet. You can keep them flat on the mat. You can lift them up to tabletop or send them up to the ceiling. Do a turn out here. So send the legs into that external rotation where you've got heels together, toes apart. Or you can begin to lower down all the way to six inches, depending on where you want to be today. So float the arms up, send the legs where you want them. Take a deep inhale, exhale, curl, head, neck, and shoulders, really reach through the fingertips and inhale, exhale. Inhaling, count of five, and exhaling, count of five. Squeeze the inner thighs together, keep looking towards the belly. Think of left to right, hollowing it out. Nice, keep going. Inhaling and exhaling. Three more, inhaling, exhale. One more. And hug the knees in, lower the upper body down. Rock the head side to side. Check in with the neck. And then readjusting, we're gonna send one leg out long. We're gonna float the right knee into the chest. Have your hands on either side. Float that left leg up. So it's gonna hover about six inches. We're gonna curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Hollow out the belly here. And switch legs and switch. If your neck starts to get in a lot of tension in it, you can lower the head down. And keep switching. One more each side. And hug the knees together, lower the head down. Rock the hips side to side. And we're gonna float the legs to tabletop. Keep knitting the ribs. Arms come up on either side of the knees. Take a deep inhale. Exhale to curl head, neck, and shoulders. Take a deep inhale. Then we're going to exhale arms and legs out to 60 degrees. Circle the arms around. Hug the knees back in. Inhaling. Exhaling to curl up as you hug the knees in. One more, hug it in, take the hands behind the head, lower it down, maybe rock it side to side. And then we're gonna take the left leg up to the ceiling, send the right leg out long. Think of hollowing out the belly again, look towards the belly button. Think of opening up through the back of the knees as we float through the straight leg single kick. So we're gonna switch legs, stretch it out. You're really reaching the legs apart and switch, switch. Keep looking towards the belly. Keep straightening out the back of the knee. And hug the legs together, hug the knees in. Rock side to side. Check in. Let's take the hands behind the head. Give it a little massage. And then draw the abdominals in. Float the legs to tabletop. Or send them straight up to the ceiling. Maybe toes together, heels apart this time. So it's kind of parallel feet. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, we're gonna lower the legs towards the mat. Or if your knees are bent, lower the Toes down, draw back up. Take a deep inhale, exhale, curl the head, neck, and shoulders. If you can, hold it in this chest lift. And 
and then lower and lift the legs. And you're only going as far as you can without letting the ribs lift. So you're not necessarily looking to get all the way to the floor. You're looking to have that control in the abs. Hug the knees in, lower the head. Rock the knees side to side. Good work. And bring the hands back under the head. Take a deep inhale to knit the ribs, engage the core. We're gonna curl the head, neck, and shoulders up. You can keep one foot flat and bring one knee up as you take right armpit to left knee, or you can float the right leg out long. And then switch sides, left armpit, right knee. And keep switching. Nice. Really working to engage through the sides. One more each side. And hug the knees in, lower the head down. Rock the knees side to side. You've made it through the ab series. Nice work. So hug the one leg in, extend the other leg, curl it up. Press the feet down. Hold behind the knees here. We're gonna work on curling the lower back. So try to come right up on your sit bones. Engage through the abs. And engage that back body, the armpit muscles in between the shoulder blades. We're gonna inhale to stack it up and engage the core. Exhale, round the lumbar spine, tuck the pelvis, reach the lumbar spine towards the mat as you look towards your belly button. Untuck the pelvis first, stack the spine up straight, grow tall through the crown of the head, exhale, tuck and round. Keep the elbows out wide to help engage the back body. Untuck the pelvis, stacking it up straight. Let's do two more. Tuck the pelvis under as you exhale. Really reach the lumbar spine down. Untuck the pelvis, inhale it up. Exhaling round. Inhaling to untuck, stack it up straight. On your next exhale, maybe you lower a little lower. Think of hollowing out the belly. It's in and up. Underneath the ribs. One more breath here. Untuck the pelvis. Stack it up straight one bone at a time. Stretch tall through the neck. And shake it out. Maybe rock the legs side to side. And then you can keep holding behind the knees. You can hold in front. You can squeeze into a tight as tight of a little ball as you want to today. But think of not letting your legs go any further apart than your thighs and your shins. We're gonna round, tuck into that little ball again, rocking just off the sacrum. Think of the low back really reaching down towards the mat while you're sending the elbows out wide and drawing the shoulders down away from the ears. Looking to the belly to rock back and forth. If it feels good to your body, you can roll back to the shoulder blades. Inhaling back, the exhale helps to lift you back up. So do two or three more. At your pace, maybe one more. And then send the legs out long. Go ahead and take a forward fold, stretch the hamstrings out a little bit. And make your way down, come down to your belly. Take the hands and make them into a diamond shape, place them right under your forehead. Bring the pubic bone down to the mat and really kind of push 
push the top of the mat away with your arms so that you're engaging your mid back, drawing the shoulder blades down. Pubic bones push down. And as you inhale, you'll curl the head, neck, and shoulders up. As you exhale, you'll lower them back down. So check back in with the shoulder blades. Keep drawing them down. The belly is active, pubic bones pushing down. You can begin to lift your hands with your head. Keep pushing the pubic bone down. Maybe push the tops of the feet down. Bring the hands into the shoulders. Find a child's pose if you need it. Check in with the low back. So wider feet helps with the low back, depending on how it's feeling today. We're gonna come back down. Elbows this time right under shoulders. Fingertips spread wide. Check in with the shoulder blades. They're going down the back. Pubic bones pushing into the mat to lengthen out the low back. Press the tops of the feet down. Keep the left one pushing into the mat, float the right leg up. Think of straightening out the back of the knee and reaching that foot long. Lower the right foot, press it into the mat, float the left, reach it long, open up the back of the knee. Keep drawing the ribs down, lower both legs to the mat. And then try to float both legs up. Maybe you can hover both legs up, keep them lifted. We're gonna bring the right leg in and kick, kick towards the buttocks. Stretch it out, left leg, kick, kick. Move with your breath. And keep alternating, keep engaging the navel, pushing the pubic bone down. Keep the shoulder blades going down the back. And let's do one more each leg. And take the hands under the shoulders, push back, find the child's pose. And then from child's pose, push up to hands and knees. Check in a minute with a little cat cow. Take your shoulders or your hands nice and wide under the shoulders. Thumbs kind of reaching towards one another, elbow creases forward, elbows back, and then add a little bend in the elbows. Bring your navel to spine, so keep the core going and do your cat cow starting from the tailbone and articulating one bone at a time. Trying to find movement through that entire spine. Think of really lifting and separating the sit bones as you come into that cow. So flow through a couple more rounds of breath, keeping the navel engaged. Keep the elbows reaching towards each other. And maybe one more. And then let's come down onto our sides. So come onto your right side first. You can grab a prop under your head or you can just use your right arm. Or if you want to, you can prop up on your elbow. It's gonna be right under your shoulder. And you want to make sure that hips and shoulders are stacked, whether you're lifted or lowered. So your choice there. If you're lifted, you have to make sure you can stay up and off the mat. Don't let your shoulders and body dump down. So stay lifted, keep the core engaged. Send the legs out to the front corner of your mat. And then check back in, I rolled back when I did that. So I'm gonna readjust so that my hips are stacked, my shoulders are stacked. Top hand could be a kickstand. We're gonna float that top leg up, our left leg up. We're gonna send it forward and back. 
So point the toes forward, flex the ankle back. And keep your movement small enough that the upper body is not moving. If you start to sway forward and back in the upper body, make your movement smaller. So one more. And then float that left leg up. Keep lifting through that right side body. We're going to raise it to the ceiling. Flex the ankle back down. Point the toe up. Flex it down. Keep reaching the leg nice and long. Keep checking in that your shoulders and hips are stacked. One more. And hug that knee in. Flex through the ankle. Top of the foot is parallel with the ceiling. We're going to push it out long. Bend it in. Let's do three more. Keep lifting, keep knitting the ribs. Check in here. Let's do tiny little lifts. One more. And then we're going to hold, flex through that bottom ankle. We're going to lift that bottom leg up to the top. And hug the knees in, pat it out. Come back onto the belly, bring the forehead to the mat. Bring the fingertips together, palms to the ceiling. And actually bring the right cheek to the mat. We're going to bring navel to spine, pubic bone presses down, float both legs. Take a deep inhale, lift head, neck, and shoulders, lift the legs. As we exhale, we're going to lower the upper body back down. We're going to kick, kick the legs. Inhale, lift up. Heads lifted, feet are lifted, lower to the left cheek this time. Lower the arms, kick, kick the legs. Moving with the breath, raising the head up, raising the feet. As you exhale, lower head down, kick the legs in. Nice, keep moving with the breath. Dropping down to the opposite cheek each time. And do one more each side. Try to keep those knees even lifting up off the mat. And then bring the hand under the shoulders, push back, find your child's pose. Shake the hips out, whatever movement feels good. And then come on to your left side. So move at your pace. Join me on your left side. Again, do the same thing you did on the opposite side. You can come down with your arm under your head. You can stay lifted. Fingers nice and wide. Your spine's parallel with the back of the mat and then the legs are angled out towards the front corner. So knitting the ribs, drawing the belly in to stay nice and lifted in that side body. Adjust to stack the hips. We're gonna point the leg forward, reach it long, flex the ankle back. Keep that movement small enough so that your upper body isn't moving with your leg. Nice. And we're going to keep it going. Keep checking in with the ribs and that the hips are stacked. I got my foot going in the wrong way. One more. And then recheck, restack. We're going to point up, flex it down. Sometimes it's called painting the wall down with the foot. Again, keeping that movement small enough that you can keep the hips one over the other. And then straighten up the top of the foot, 
parallel to the ceiling, drag the knee in, send it back out. So it goes kind of straight back, pushing back almost a little bit behind you. Keeping that ankle flex, keep lifting through the ribs and the low belly. One more. And then holding with that leg long, ankle flex, little lifts. Keep knitting the ribs, draw the belly in, hover that top leg. May need to lower down a little to float the left leg up to meet the right. Flex through both ankles. Keep drawing the abs in. And hug the legs in, pat it out. Take a child's pose if you need to, maybe cat-cow. So just take a minute to kind of check in. And then stretch it out on hands and knees so that your sit bones are reaching straight behind you, fingertips are forward. We're gonna come into our cat stretch from the bottom here. So we're gonna tuck the pelvis under, navel to spine, it comes up and under the ribs as you slide the fingertips in, shift the hips forward, articulate up one bone at a time to tall kneeling, knit the ribs, abs in, take the arms up as you inhale. Exhale, tuck chin to chest, roll down one bone at a time. Think of peeling off the wall behind you. And keep going, keep lifting the ribs forward, or the hips, I mean, until the last minute, stretch it out. Sit bones reach straight back and up. Exhale, tuck the pelvis under, round it up one bone at a time. Let the shoulders just relax away from the ears. Knit the ribs, inhale the arms up. Exhale, tuck and round. Come really rolling one bone at a time. Press that lumbar spine back as you lower, 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 and then untuck the pelvis. Stretch it out. And just hold here now. Shake the hips side to side. And one more time, we're just going to tuck the pelvis under. Roll back up. One bone at a time. The head comes up last. And check in here, we're gonna come sitting now. So legs out long, ankles flexed, bend the knees so that you can be right up on your sit bones and you can separate your feet a nice comfortable distance apart. Let's do our twist. So let's take the hands out, palms facing forward, knit the ribs, draw the head up, take a deep inhale, Exhale, we're gonna twist belly button from crown of the head over to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist right. And the head's just kind of going along for the ride so you don't have to get the neck super involved in the twist. But really try to bring out the abdomen. Excuse me. Keep growing tall each time. And this is the last one on whatever side. Check in, just take a nice stretch forward, stretch out the hamstrings. Send the sit bones back. And from here, we're gonna let the pelvis tuck, drop the chin to the chest, take the arms with you as you inhale, stack the spine up straight. So now we're in the position for spine stretch forward. Feet are still flexed, that hip width are a little wider apart. Take a deep inhale to grow tall, knit the ribs. Exhale, tuck the pelvis under, look towards your belly button, or it's like you're looking down your shirt. Stretch it forward. Drop the shoulder blades back down into their sockets. Untuck the pelvis first as you inhale, stack the spine up straight. 
Exhale, tuck it around, look in your shirt. Inhale, stack the spine back up straight, one bone at a time. Exhale, curl it back. Really tuck, tuck, tuck around the spine. Untuck the pelvis. You can bend the knees to stack the spine up straight and let's just do one more. Keeping those shoulder blades back where they need to be on the back body. Exhale, tuck it around. Inhale, untuck, stack it up straight. And go ahead and stretch it out again. And maybe push the big toes forward. Reach the little toes towards you. Get that inner leg working. One more breath. And then we're going to bend the knees to stack the spine back up straight. Take your feet as wide as your yoga mat this time. So take them a little wider. We're going to move into saw. So the arms start out, palms facing forward. You inhale to stack the spine up here. We're going to tuck and round like spine stretch forward. Only we're going to take the right hand to the left outside of the left foot. Flip that back palm. Find your saw with the front arm that left pinky, untuck the pelvis, stack the spine back up straight, left hand to the right foot, tuck and roll, inhale, send it back up straight, I forgot my chops, inhale, exhale, right hand, left foot, you can chop with that front arm if you want to, untuck the pelvis, stack it up straight, one bone at a time, left hand to right pinky, toe, Chop there. Untuck the pelvis, stack the spine up straight. Let's do one more each side. Rounding, tucking the pelvis, reaching. Inhale, stack it back up straight. Tuck the pelvis, look towards the belly, flip the back palm, chop three times. And stack it back up straight. Stretch the arms back. Roll the shoulders a couple times. And bring the hands down, lock, knees side to side. And just kind of check in a moment. Maybe let them roll over to one side and then the other slowly. And let's move into a little teaser. So doing your best here, doing what feels good to you. I'll flow through a couple options. So you can hold your teaser position, which is kind of like your boat in yoga. So you can hold behind the knees. You can like take the palms to the ceiling. The lower spine is rounding, but the upper back is going straight so that your heart is open, your chest is lifted, whether you're holding or releasing your hands. So you can hold that basic teaser. You can keep doing that, or you can roll back one bone at a time, straighten the legs out, send the arms overhead. As you exhale, you would take chin to chest, take the arms out and around, draw the legs up as you return to that teaser position. So you can have here palms up, legs long or bent. Roll it back down, send the legs out long, stretch the arms overhead, knit the ribs, draw to the chest, begin to articulate the spine as you float the legs back up, open the chest. One more time, roll it back, reach the legs long, stretch it out, inhale, draw the ribs, exhale, curl it up. You're thinking of one bone at a time, looking down towards your belly. Lift the chest, hold here, lower the toes down to the mat. Keep opening up the chest, knitting the ribs. One more, lower the legs, lift, float them. Maybe you can articulate the spine towards the mat while the legs stay out long, just a little. Movements to lower the lower body, upper body. Hold, take a break if you need to. 
If you want to try both at the same time, you're going to think keep the chest open, keep it lifted, lower the up, lower back towards the mat, lower the toes, draw them back up. You're trying to lift the chest each time. Hug the knees in. Maybe rock the legs side to side. Maybe just give them a little squeeze. And then keeping the hands back behind, you can bring the fingertips to face the feet if that feels okay to you. You can keep them the other way if that feels better. So whatever feels good to you. But think of squeezing the elbows together. So you can let the elbows bend, squeeze them towards one another. Take a deep inhale, knit the ribs, engage the core, float the hips up. So you can come to this reverse tabletop position and exhale lower. Let's do one more there. Lifting, lift them up towards the ceiling, fire the glutes. Lower back down. Let's do one more. You can keep it going or you can send the heels, the feet together, send the feet out long. Heels are on the ground, toes stay lifted. And we lift back up, float the hips up, draw the abs in, and lower back down. Hug the knees to chest. And then keep the feet bent. Bring your hands back behind, squeezing elbows together. We're going to float the legs up. Think of lifting through the chest and roll onto the left hip to take the legs over to the left. Roll back to center, open the chest, roll to the right. So it's kind of like you're ringing out the belly here, a little twist. Legs come back, center, open the chest, float onto the left hip. Think of lifting the knees towards the shoulder. And then keep going back to center, legs to the right. And you're squeezing the legs in, you're lifting, you're firing that lower core. One more time to the right. And back to center. So let's keep going with that. You can keep the legs bent or you can extend them each time. So we're gonna float over to the left hip Send the legs out long, bend the knees, roll back to center, roll to the right hip, extend the legs long, bend, roll back to center, to the left, reach the legs long, bend them in, roll back to center, one more to the right, up on that right hip, lengthen out the legs, bend them in, roll back to center. Stretch it out, find a hamstring stretch, maybe a bound angle. So take a moment to just kind of readjust here. Find a nice stretch, feel good movement, maybe even a cat cow. Maybe shake out the wrists, whatever you need there. And then let's come back to hands and knees. Or maybe you're already there doing your cat cows. So joining me here, thumbs are reaching towards one another, fingers are nice and wide, almost to the edge of your mat. So a really nice wide shoulder width. Knees under hips, draw the abs in. Let's do the rhomboid presses. So it's right between your shoulder blades and even your lats here. Think of the Shoulder blade muscles, we're going to raise them up to the ceiling and lower them back down. Small movement without moving the pelvis. So think of that spine being one long line, nice straight spine, tiny movement to lift and lower. Don't let the pelvis tuck. Even the front of the shoulders doesn't really move. Keep reaching the elbows towards one another. Kind of like we're squeezing them in towards the center line. And 
And then maybe step the knees a little further back. Keep hugging the elbows in. Elbow creases forward towards the front of the mat. Elbows squeezing, lowering down towards like a chaturanga from the knees and then raise back up. Two, three more of those. Keep the core engaged, keep knitting the ribs together. Squeezing the elbows in, lifting in that shoulder blade area. Maybe one more. Push back, find your child's pose. And then lower down, we're gonna come back onto our backs. Let's explore bridge a little bit more. So feet parallel with the edges of your mats. Take a deep inhale to knit the ribs, engage the core, lengthen out the neck. As you exhale, articulate up one bone at a time. Lifting into your bridge, hold it here a moment and just breathe and lengthen. Think of really firing the outer hips, maybe even rolling to the outside edges of your feet. Lengthen the knees out, squeeze the shoulder blades together, but keep knitting the ribs. Press down through the arms. Articulate the upper back, middle back, lower back down towards the mat. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, we're going to curl it up one bone at a time. Inhale again, maybe roll to the outside edges of the feet or just explore this. If you want to lift that right knee into the chest, you'll float it up. You can hold it there. You can reach it up to the ceiling and lower lift three times. Just explore whatever works for you or keep bridging up and down. Hug the knee back in, lower it down. Level off the hips. Roll back down if you need to. If you can stay lifted, we'll go ahead and move to the left leg. Bending that knee into the chest. Take it to the ceiling, point the toe. Lower lift three times. Draw the ribs down. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Lift it to the ceiling, bend it into the chest. Float that foot down, readjust, level off the hips. Articulate down one bone at a time. And do a few pelvic tilts. Take your feet as wide as your mat. And let's do a wide leg windshield wiper, holding on one side for three breaths. So bring that right um, shoulder to the mat, send the knees to the left, and really feel that spinal twist through the upper spine. Inhale the knees back to center. Draw the ribs in, engage the core. Send the knees over to the right. Press that left shoulder into the mat. Feel that nice twist. One more deep breath here. Knees come back to center, maybe a little rocking and rolling back and forth. Release the abs, just kind of think of letting the abs and pelvic floor go as much as you can. If you have a block, grab your block. You can use your hands or your blanket or whatever you have. If you have your hands, make sure they're nice and low. Try to bring your pubic bone up higher than your ASIS bone to just release through the psoas and the iliacus. So if you can come here, if you have the right props, 
That's awesome. If you don't, you can come back to the cat cow position, hands and knees, and just let the belly hang towards the floor. So two different options. Think of releasing, think of the upper body and the sternum melting into the mat. And shifting forward, you can even take your hands and take a nice little gentle stretch, your collarbones reaching down towards your knees. Maybe roll the head side to side a few times. And now think of those mid ribs and bottom ribs melting towards the mat. Even do any myofascial release techniques you want to. Just kind of stretching with your hands, those tissues in opposite directions. But keep the feet flat, keep the legs relaxed. Keep releasing here. Let's do five more long, deep breaths. It's good to stay for at least five minutes if you can, maybe even 10 to get more and more releasing. But for now, we're just gonna push the block away if you have a block. Just trying to use as little abs as possible. Or just roll onto your side. If you're on hands and knees, maybe coming to cat cow. And then gently finding your way back up to a seated position. So thanks for joining me today.